This $20 cheapo USB microscope claims to have a zoom of 1,600 times, whereas my high-end Zeiss microscope only has a zoom of 400 times. So what gives? Well, the reason is probably not what you expect. If there's anything I hope you take away from this video, it's that there's a whole lot more that goes into determining how nice a microscope is than just the zoom numbers. I'll be using the words zoom, magnification, and power interchangeably throughout this video. Let's take a look at the images that each of these microscopes produce. We're going to be looking at this tiny little P on this business card. On the left here, we have the image that the Zeiss microscope produced, and on the right is the USB microscope. So clearly, you'll see that the Zeiss microscope produced an image that was way crisper and way more zoomed in. So what's going on here? Beep, beep, beep. Man, my bullcrap meter is going crazy right now. Beep, 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 beep. The reason that these zoom numbers are different is because they're measuring zoom differently. The 250x of the Zeiss microscope is in reference to its true optical magnification, whereas this USB microscope is referencing the 1600 times apparent magnification. Optical magnification is a little bit easier to explain, so let's start there. If you take a close look at the microscope objectives, you'll notice that there's a magnification number there. And then same thing for the eyepieces, you look at that and there's also a magnification number there. To find the total optical magnification of your microscope, just multiply the number on the objective times the number on the eyepiece. In our case, I was using a 10x objective to produce that image along with a 2.5x camera microscope adapter, which you can, in this context, just think of as a, being an eyepiece. We're going to put this letter P back under the microscope, but before we do that, I wanna measure it in real life using my handy little calipers here. So you'll see that the P's width is just about one millimeter, which is very convenient for us. All right, so we have our business card under the microscope here. You'll note that we have it under the 10X objective, and I'm illuminating the sample using reflected illumination. The way that I'm doing this is kind of a janky bootleg thing where I took these IKEA lamps and I modified them by putting these 3D printed brackets on them with that hold a couple of lenses. So it turns the divergent beams of light from the IKEA lamps into a tiny pinpoint spot so that I can point it right exactly where I need to. I had to turn out all the lights for this next little section here. Hopefully you'll be able to actually see everything well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out my eyepiece and I'm going to take a white slip of paper. I'm gonna put it in front of where the eyepiece would have otherwise been and you can see that there is a, an image of a P that's appearing here. And if we go in and measure it with the calipers, we'll find that it turns out that it actually is 10 millimeters, exactly what we would have expected. Who knew that a 10X objective would take a one millimeter object and turn it into a 10 millimeter image. As a side note, if I had kept the eyepiece in there, well, you can actually just see what happens here. There is, again, a letter P, but depending on how close or how far away I have the sheet of paper, it'll change the size of the P because the eyepiece is a lens. So it comes into focus and then it goes out of focus. So the reason that this works is that you need the eyepieces in order to see this with your eye because your eye also has a lens in it. It's taking the collimated light, refocusing it so that the lens in your eye can re-collimate it so that it'll hit the back, of your, the back of your eye and the photoreceptors correctly. Digital microscopes work a little bit differently than a traditional microscope would. So these things also have an objective inside of them. I'll take this little cap off for you. So you can see that there are all these little LEDs in a ring here. So these LEDs shine light onto your sample. The sample gets reflected. It goes back into this, which is actually basically a microscope objective. So it hits the microscope objective, and then it goes back here, and it ends up hitting an image sensor in the back of it. I was going to open this thing up to actually show you guys what that looks like, but they, to assemble this, have press fit all the parts together. So in order to actually get to the image sensor, I would have to destructively open this microscope and I don't particularly want to break it. You'll note here that there is no eyepiece in this optical arrangement, which is actually really important because this image sensor 
wants to get a collimated beam of light. So remember how we had that letter P in front of where the eyepiece otherwise would have been? We could have actually, if we had disassembled this thing and put the image sensor right in that collimated beam of P, you, we, would have made, we would have made an image and we could have captured it on this thing. I can't show you the image sensor from inside of my digital microscope without breaking it, but what I can show you is the image sensor inside of my DSLR. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this DSLR with the bare image sensor and I'm gonna put it where that piece of paper was where the collimated beam of P was coming out of my microscope. Okay, I took the lens off of my DSLR. Now I'm going to put it in front of my microscope where the eyepiece otherwise would have been, where we had the P appearing on that piece of paper. You'll see that it does actually form the letter P, which is somewhat in focus on the image sensor. It's time to talk about apparent magnification. So I have this image of a P open on my computer, which I took using this USB microscope when it was at its supposedly 1600 times zoom setting, which by the way, that was a really hard image to capture and have it in focus because if I, if I touched the table that this was on, this thing would wobble around and go completely out of focus. But hey, what can you, what can you do for 20 bucks? So if I take my calipers here and I put them over this P, oh look, it's 125 millimeters from an originally one millimeter size P. So that would give us 125 times apparent magnification, which is absurd. So this means that the way that they're measuring zoom, if I was just using a bigger computer monitor, suddenly I would have more apparent magnification, which you know, you're of course not gonna actually get a better image by putting this on a bigger TV. You're just gonna get a larger image that's more blurry, which comes down to the heart of why measuring zoom like this is sort of absurd. In order to get this 1600 times zoom magnification that they claim, I did the math on it, and you would need a big screen TV that's 160 millimeters large, uh, which came out to be like 60 inches wide for American viewers here. But to be fair to the manufacturers, it is sort of challenging to measure digital microscopes using optical zoom because that can also be misleading because if you have you can have a microscope that has a certain size objective and if you just make the image sensor higher resolution so you put more pixels onto the same size sensor so the sensor is still the same size but you have double the number of pixels on it you will actually get better magnification off of it so, you know, optical zoom doesn't really tell the full story for digital microscopes, but I mean, come on. 1600 times zoom, that's absurd for this little thing. The fact of the matter is that microscope manufacturers are incentivized to bump up their magnification numbers because unwitting consumers immediately think that more magnification must be more better, which is not the case. But it does bring up the question, how much magnification do you actually need? Well, I made a video about this very topic that you can check out somewhere up around here. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and absolutely demolish that. <laughs>